Hi guys, how's it going? I hope you're having a great day. Uh, I see <laughs> I have a tons of arrows in my body. Uh, actually, there are three of them. I was fighting the skeleton over there and I noticed uh, that if you shoot shot an arrow, if you shoot an arrow and it sticks into the ground, uh, you will actually see it like that. Do you see? Uh, it lights up the area because of the optifine. And apparently there's a limit uh, to how far they're seen. If you go away far enough, they will disappear. And this means also light disappears. That's a strange effect. Huh. I didn't know that. I didn't know that there's a limit uh, to how far the entities can be seen. Anyway, a lot has happened since the previous episode and this should be episode number 14, uh, but it's actually no uh, number 13. Uh, what I did was I messed up the recording and uh, number 13, 13 is unusable. I can't use it at all, which is really sad because we did a lot of different things. Uh, I showed you the arena over there and uh, the main improvement is that it's flooded. Uh, you just stand over here. Uh, you start the ritual and then you just shoot the Gaia Garden as it uh, jumps around and it will jump around only in that little circle or or a cube, uh, nowhere else. So it's really easy to shoot it and you can finish a fight in a few minutes mostly. So if you lo uh, take a look at the last six entries, uh, I have Will of Ahrim, Darok, uh, Gutan, Torag, Verak and Karel and they apply some effects at critical hit. So if I critical hit a mob, it will apply a weakness effect, um, slowness effect, wither effect, it will pierce through armor, uh, I will be healed and um, lower I am, lower HP I have, uh, less damage I make. What? What? How did you come here? Did you escape from over there? No, they are fine. Huh. Okay, that's strange. To say the least. I had a bug in my world. Uh, not bug, uh, but I did something wrong. Uh, and I had over 800 cows in that spawner over there. Uh, basically, my... Um, basically, this uh, mana pool was empty. Mana pool over there, see? It was empty. And uh, well, because it was empty, it didn't kill the animals. And what's happening? Why is this not working? Oh, because the mana pool is, is empty too. Okay, we need to do something about that. Or maybe not. Hmm, maybe we can make a bigger battery of mana pools. Uh, so that we can fill it in in one go and fill let's say 10 mana pools and then all those 10 mana pools will fill the one uh, that needs to be filled Okay, so we did that. We've got some relics. Uh, that's the first relic. It's called fruit of Grisaya and it fills your hunger But it also takes a lot of mana, but since we have mana mirror we have huge mana battery over here I expanded it and I was AFK for a few hours and it's already all filled up. Um, so we have tons of mana. Uh, then I also have uh, two other relics. One is called Key of the King's Law and the other one is Eye of Flugel. Eye of Flugel is really simple to use. You just shift right click on the block and you mark this block and now if you hold this Flugel Bam! See, you get teleported to this block. This is really useful if you are playing, uh, let's say, uh, skyblock and you fall off the skyblock. You can just quickly switch to this, uh, hold down the button and you will get te teleported back to the island. If you marked the block on the island beforehand. And I suggest you do this uh, while you are taking void damage because void damage resets your fall damage. Uh, if you uh, jump up while falling, you will keep all the fall damage and smash with great, um, great power into the ground and probably die. So you will die on the island, that's true, but you will die. Uh, if you're playing hardcore, that's no good. So wait until you get to the void, you start taking void damage and then you can... Pop this uh, flugel and you will be back with no damage, 
uh, no full damage, but of course a little bit of uh, void damage. And then there's a key of King's Law. It creates a barrier of weapons and tools behind you, and then when you release the button, they all go in the spot you are pointing at. They should, or they did, uh, destroy the land in older versions, but now, as you can see, uh, these tools or and weapons don't destroy the land. And they do quite a lot of damage. I tried it with a mop and it destroys the mop. <laughs> so uh, that's about relics. Uh, the second thing uh, I was doing is this, this spawner platform down here. There's a spawner cage up there, I will show you in a second. Uh, and uh, here is our processing uh, room. Basically there's a Hopper hog below this platform uh, that collects all the mobs, and the mobs for now are rotten flesh, bows, and arrows. Uh, arrows are discarded into the lava pit over here somewhere. I'm not exactly sure where the lava is, but it should be here somewhere. Yeah, see, it's over there. So it's just uh, it's just discarded into the lava, and. Uh, we didn't use silk touch and everything else is processed so rotten flesh is dropped onto a come on stop dragging me around so the rotten flesh is dropped onto this gormorilis every two seconds yep uh, because gormorilis eats any food you give it so you have to give it in intervals and the interval needs to be as long as the saturation of food is so rotten flesh i will show you rotten flesh uh, heals you or gives you back two food shanks uh, or two chicken shanks whatever you call them so you have to drop one rotten flesh every two seconds and then two seconds gormorilis will uh, digest this rotten flesh and create mana and once it's done you can drop another rotten flesh and this is why we have uh, this uh, our hovering hovering hourglass over there with two seconds timer on it and then this just gets uh, funneled into mana pool which is full right now and the other part is processing of bones into bone blocks so uh, bones get transported into this crafty crate uh, then five times per second uh, this dispenser with a wand triggers it uh, triggers that crafty crate and that creates bone meal and then that bone meal gets transported over to this crafty crate uh, which creates bone blocks and we already have uh, two and a half thousand bone blocks more than enough uh, more than we need ever but still, I put in uh, upgrade with emeralds and then wait upgrade and now we can have, I don't know, 10,000 or maybe it's 15,000 bone blocks plus um, the access will get deleted. So that's that's one part of this spawner trap and the other part is over there. Uh, we did all of this in a previous episode, but I messed up as I said and yeah. Does it work? Yeah, it works. It still works. <laughs> look, look at that. Look at that. These two blocks move out. And then these two blocks uh, move in. And you have a passage. And then you click again. It doesn't matter uh, which button you click. This one or the one on the outside. Then th these two blocks uh, pull in. And these two blocks pull in. And the wall is complete. It's smooth. You don't see any pistols, anything. Click. Bam. And you can go out. Click. And you're closed in. <laughs> is that cool? Let me show you how I did it. Uh, the circuit is huge, but mainly because I didn't, I, I didn't want to optimize it. That, that's all. Or uh, I was too lazy to optimize it. Uh, here we have a uh, pool spawner spender with the messenger lens. Messenger lens uh, decreased the cost of mana, and it's really good for such contraptions because. Uh, yeah, it's it's not going to use up a lot of mana at all so um, it shoots this uh, animated torch which is in toggle mode so each time uh, it receives mana pools it will turn for 180 degrees and it works like a t flip flop basically uh, this is just uh, a couple of uh, pulse shorteners which pull uh, which shorten the pulse for uh, on one tick uh, the left one is inverted so each time this flips uh, 
each one of them will will pulse or only one of them will pulse. The last time I pressed button this one pulsed, uh, but next time I'm going to press the button this one will pulse. Uh, and then that's just a simple contraption of moving this force relays in one direction and then back into the other direction. So if we want to open the door, uh, till this line will pulse, it will uh, push the force relays that way and these two that way and that will close the door. Uh, you can see there is a delay between them. I can probably decrease that delay uh, to make the animation smoother. Uh, and then uh, when the door closes, first this one will trigger and then uh, this one will trigger. Uh, because it can, as you can see, redstone line goes that way. Here is one tick delay. Here is second tick of delay. And this one has a delay of four ticks. So this one is two ticks later than this one and all all works out marvelously let me show you no oh it's close yeah it, of course it's closed right now now it's going to open and now it's closed and the opening animation should be faster yeah it has the same timing right now <laughs> that that's that looks great uh, so my next plan for this spawner is to imbue these spawners with a life, life something, life, life imbuer, of course, life imbuer. So the idea is that you place this above the spawner, give it a mana, and the spawner will be active all the time. And that's 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 about it. <laughs> so we can be anywhere we want, and these spawners will be active. Uh, by the way, this is consecrated soil, and uh, it hurts the undead, so skeletons and and zombies and it lights them on fire uh, even though they die from fall damage it's it still lights them on fire and you get this nice effect in the night but the area is quite dangerous because the mobs can spawn around it because it's dark like that uh, let's hop to my creative world and i'm going to show you uh, what i have in mind next uh, oh, I need to I need to explain it first, of course. I need to move that mana over there to up there uh, and put it into these life imbuers, which we don't have yet, because for the recipe we need prismarine, and of course we don't have prismarine shards. Uh, they used to, uh, or you can create them from quartz if you are in sky block. So, Garden of Glass. But if you are not in the Garden of Glass, well, tough luck, you actually need to find this. So, we need to find Ocean Monument. But until then, let's let's design the mana transportation and we can work on our adventure next time. Let's see. We need to, we need to transport mana from, let's say here, to out there. Now, we have many options. We could go a simple option. Let's say we have a mana pool, uh, then we have a spreader, we can use, let's say, uh, elven or even a Gaia mana spreader. Let's use elven, I think it's going to be enough. Uh, let's take some empty mana pools, uh, diluted are going to be uh, in the middle, and then this one will be for the end. And uh, let's take some lands, we can probably use uh, velocity and uh, potency, if I'm not mistaken. Or, um, wait, no, wait, no, that's potency, resistance, efficiency, yeah, exactly. So, this one takes more mana and this one increases the velocity, but decreases the length, or, or something like that. So, we can do it that way, uh, then let's take want to see the range of spreader, uh, it's over here. So, if I'm not mistaken, there should be called... There should be a rod called Highlands, yeah, exactly, and this, no, this one places cobblestone, uh, mm, or maybe it was because I didn't have mana, that could be a reason, right, mana tablet, let's see, yeah, exactly, this one places uh, dirt right in the middle of, of air, uh, I think that's, that's about it, is it? What's the range in this one? Wait, it is... How much is it? Show me! God damn it! 
it doesn't want to okay so it's over there it shows you where it's going to collide with the with the block okay so if we have mana pool over there see like that it's going to shoot into, shoot into this diluted mana pool oh it's already shooting and then we can just uh, chain this in uh, i'm going to chain it that way and let's see like that and another mana pool over here bam and that's about it that's about it that's all that we need see yeah exactly See, that's really easy mana transportation and it works you know it's fine but i want to get creative and there's a thing called uh, it's called mana 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 something mine card with mana pool exactly and of course we also need some rails let me see uh these are wooden rails wooden rail with a trapdoor um okay and then we have just normal just normal rails yeah exactly wooden rails what's the deal with the wooden rails can we just yeah we can use them normally i don't know maybe they are slow or something i'm not, I'm not sure uh, either way we're going to use normal rails and uh, also conveyor belts conveyor belt so let's this one take this one and see if this works so if we push a minecart no <laughs> it doesn't work so if we push a minecart onto there oh we can't because uh, this blocks it hmm, okay so what if we drop it if we do it like that huh it's going to work so my idea is to move it with conveyor belts oh look at that <laughs> look at that and then we can uh, maybe do it that way and can we place it back onto rail like that huh or maybe you know what we can do it that way like that and i think that's going to put it on the rail let's test it. let's test this out yes moves it up oh that's great we could do it that way guys we could do it that way so we can pump mana from mana pool into this uh mana pool minecart uh, and once it's full of mana we can detect this and transport it uh, up and then unload the mana up there that's one way to do it and and as you can see we can transport it transport it it with oh god that's quite difficult to say we can transport it with <laughs> conveyor belts uh, but i want to make uh, slime block launchers and i'm not sure whether this works uh, but I think it's worth giving it a try. Now, I will need some time to set up this uh, thing. This entire contraptions. Uh, but, let me see. What's the color in this one? No, the other way around. Yeah, like that. And this mana pump is super fast. As you can see, it fills up mana pool in a second. Then, let's move it a bit more that spot like that then let's destroy the rails okay now I already messed up <laughs> uh, let's see we I'm going to, I'm trying to use slime block like that oh no it didn't work okay let's try again can we place rails on top of slime box we can well that's strange isn't it let's pump in the mana and see how far they bounce this is what i want to try can i get the rail without destroying the minecart yes i can okay as i said um what do we need we need piston and sticky while we are at it sticky would work the best okay like that let's destroy everything around this slime block i don't want any block to be launched with it okay like that and that's about it let's stick a button and see how it works it goes it goes up a few blocks <laughs> yeah okay um 
Uh, so, can we use this for something? Huh. Yeah, the idea is that we have these launchers all the way up. But as you can see, the height uh, it launches the, 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 the minecart is not really great. Let me check it. Yeah, it barely barely gets on this block. Huh, can I place the block? Yeah, I can. Okay. So it barely gets up to this block. And we, if we have another slime launcher over here, we can propel it even further. But hey, that's quite... That's quite a long ride, isn't it? Like this is... How much? Five blocks? It's not ten. It's definitely not ten. Let's take out our measuring tape. Oh, uh, that's that's from Chisel and Bit, and that's from Bibliocraft. I think I was using Bibliocraft. Oh wait, that's measuring. That's what? That's measuring bits. Yeah, that's measuring bits. No, no, no. I I, I don't want to use this. Can I get rid of this? Oh, <gasps> I can't. Oh no! What the hell? How do I remove this? Okay, okay, we shift right click and it goes away. So yeah, we have to use this tape measure. Okay, let's see. From this to over there, that's five blocks, that's eight blocks. Ah, uh, okay, no, eight blocks is too ill. I, I don't want to, I don't want to have eight blocks. I don't have, I don't, I don't want to have this launcher each eight blocks. No, we are going to use these conveyor belts. I mean, I like conveyor belts anyway, they are amazing, <laughs> so why not use them uh, another time? I should say, why not use them once again? And that's the project finished, guys. Let's cover it up, uh, but before we do that, let me show you how it works. Uh, I added this branch of redstone dust, and it turns on when this mana pool is off, so this minecart will take off if this mana pool is empty, or the card is or the cart is full. Uh, it can take off in both ways. Oh, I just sent it back. Uh, so this is my elevator. It goes all the way up there. Let me quickly blink up there, like that. Here it will stop over here uh, and unload all the mana into this mana pool. This mana pool will send it to all those four uh, mana pools, which are going to power somewhere in the near future. Uh, these uh, elven mana spreaders and through them uh, this life aggregator or life something something how how it is called it's called life imbuer oh of course uh, they will power these four life imbuers and if the mana pool is empty this one of course uh, or wait no uh, if this mana pool in the minecart is empty uh, this will turn on uh, send the minecart back and the minecart will fall down over here and just simply go back like that and over here to this station and it will take out all of mana in this mana pool and go on very simple design and this is the project finish let's cover it up um one stone no one stone one stack of stone oh god like that okay um where do i want to cover it up probably around here somewhere like this and we can have this spreader visible yeah that looks fine yeah it's okay maybe we can do it that way like that and then we need some jungle leaves let's say free jungle leaves does it work yeah it works okay <laughs> I'm getting better at this corpuria stuff. Uh, we can do it that way and maybe this to cover the spreader. Yep, how does it look like from outside? Yep, you don't see it at all. You might see a spreader over there if you look really closely, but most of the time you won't be able to see it. And <laughs> I built this shaft out of light gray uh, glass panes and I think it looks amazing, doesn't it? Like from far away. It looks cool, it looks uh, steampunk and... Oh, right! 
we could maybe make it even more steampunkish if we add, uh, let's say, whoa, that was way too fast. If we add some immersive engineering stuff like, uh, oh god, there's a skeleton trying to shoot me. And you just you just saw a minecart falling from from the above. Uh, we can add some relays, some wires. Yeah, maybe I can take a look at this. And the minecart is going back up. Yay! It works. It works 100%. Uh, maybe we could add some lights. I was thinking of uh, looping the piece of torch or glowstone or mana glass uh, through this track, like going up and falling down and going up and falling down. Uh, to light the area, but I'm not sure I can make it work uh, and at the same time make it work for minecart, so I'm, I'm not sure. And that's pretty much it for this episode. My name has been Underby, you just watched my adventure, and if you enjoyed it, maybe give it a like. Check out older episodes in the linked playlist, subscribe for more adventure, and have a nice day.